Yes, we're back on the 67 Hill Hill channel with me, Hamish Carton, Celtic legend Jackie McNamara, part of the Seville team, and John McGinley here as well. And it is that uh, Seville team that's going to be focusing on a bit of today's video. Uh, comments made a little while ago now, but we think they're still relevant by Dermot Desmond. He told The Athletic in an interview, if you asked me if the Celtic team today would beat the one that reached the 2003 UEFA Cup final in Seville, I'd say yes. Jackie, over to you. <laughs> I'd say no. Uh, I think I think we would uh, be too strong for them. I think we'd be too strong, uh, you know, physically and and mentally. Mm. Uh, I think we would, you know, how, how would they handle the front three of Sutton, Hartson and mm. and Henrik uh, yeah, against the that. centre halves that we've got? Uh, you know, you've seen how they've come up against centre half sort of last year that put himself about but none of them would be able to shift John hmm. and Sutty would be too clever and Henrik's movement would be too sharp uh, and at the back you know in terms of uh, trying to you know dominate Bobo or Big <laughs> Johan uh, do you know, know back on St Edward to have a bit of joy against him? I think we would handle him I think we'd handle him, keep him in front, you know, I know he would, I think he'd, the only way he would cause his problems in the break, if uh, if it was open, I think he's at his strongest when, sometimes when the ball's in front of him, chasing over the top, but most of his game recently um, has been way back to goal, and I think, uh, I think Bobo might give, would maybe give a few free kicks away against him, <laughs> and uh, that clump on one. What about um, Bruni versus Lennon? Do you think that one would get a bit tasty in the middle? It would die. I think. Uh, I think it would. I think. Um, <laughs> I think the, the midfield would be an interest. It would be interesting as well. You know, uh, Lenny, Lambo, Stillian. Mm. Uh, mm. It's a, a good three in there. Um, I think. No, I think. Uh, I think our team would be would be the winners. Yeah, Lennon versus Brown, it doesn't have to be hypothetical, of course, because we did actually see that at the tail end of, of mm -hmm. Lennon's career, and I think it did, from memory, get a bit feisty between the two of them <laughs> uh, prior to, to Scott Brown signing for us. Um, mm -hmm. what, what did you make of the overall comments, John? Uh, from my point of view, I thought they were a little bit um, daft. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's slightly out of touch with what, what this team is at the moment. Um, I... I enjoy this team and I've enjoyed watching them over the last few years and they've, they've achieved enormous success domestically. But I mean, Jack is right. I think, I think that, I'm not just saying this. I think they would get dominated by the civil team. Um, I think it'd be um, a comfortable victory for them. Like Jackie says, leadership, um, physicality, you know, intelligence, game intelligence, game management. Um, that that team is just on another level for me. For most Celtic teams of perhaps all Celtic teams of my lifetime. Um, and, you know, there's a reason they have such a special place in people's heart. And, uh, you know, although they didn't even win the final, they're still icons and they're all icons for what they achieved at the club. So for me, um, Dermot Desmond got that, that one wrong. But, I, I mean, it is interesting because hmm. you, you, look at, you look at this squad, you look at Lennon's squad and you think, could any of them make it into the team? Would there be a single player? Jackie? I've got, I've got two. I'll just okay. give you them quickly. Uh, yeah. I do think Edward would get in, although I've got a slight caveat afterwards. Um, and I also wonder whether, obviously we don't know much about Barkas, but I wonder if, if he may turn out to a better keeper than Rav. Mm. I would say that one of them, I would agree with maybe one of them, your points here. Possibly, I've not seen enough of him yet uh, in terms of the goalkeeper. I don't, I don't see Edward playing in front of three. Uh, I think, in fairness, I thought Big John Hartson was a loss to us in Seville. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought it would have been a different dimension as well to change things. You know, he was out with a back injury, the big man. He was instrumental in getting us there. Mm -hmm. You know, in certain games away and sort of ego and stuff. Um, and to be honest, that's that's where you're judged. You know, we were judged on European games, not domestic. Mm -hmm. And we were judged on old firm games when Rangers were Rangers. Uh, <laughs> you know when they were, you know you had 
quality, their quality side, the good players, you know, the gas goings, loud ropes. Uh, you know, it's no, I think I think we would win that. No problem. <laughs> Can see the, the smile on your face, Jackie. Um, very diplomatic of you. Um, so you talk about there, you know, going the extra mile in Europe, and obviously your teams did that. Desmond also spoke about, you know, this team perhaps have a psychological blockage when it comes to Europe or have a fear of failure. Is that is it a mentality problem that's stopping Celtic from reaching the next level in Europe? Well, again, it's as you said with that, that comment there, where they would beat the, the team. That's mm-hmm. where we were strong, you know, going mm-hmm. away underdogs, you know, after the first game against uh, as soon as he's Blackburn, went down there and battered them. Liverpool away, Anfield went down there and beat them comfortably as well. And that's home and away. You know, there was always a, a massive support with us anyway. But we knew we could go to places and with the mentality, the, the game knowledge to keep things tight. Certain games at home, we maybe not played our best at home with the aggregate score. But we knew we had players with that front three, with deliveries, Alan Thompson, his goals and things we'd done. Uh, you know, going away to, to Barcelona and, and, and drawn with them twice. You know, we had real strong mentality about us. And we knew our jobs, most mm. importantly. Yeah, I think it's interesting, you know, looking at that team you were part of in, in Seville and, I don't know, maybe it's completely harsh to look at some of the players and, and maybe think that they weren't the best actual footballers. Um, mm, maybe that's com- 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 <laughs> I know, I'm not referring to yourself, of course, Jackie. I'm maybe referring to some of the, the centre-backs who, you know, were, were typically, you know, big-built players who could win headers. And maybe when people look at this current team and maybe just the way football's moved on in the last 20 years um, with, you know, ball-playing centre-backs weren't really a thing 20 years ago. Um, maybe it's naturally people look at this team now and go, oh, they can all pass the ball better. They're, they're necessarily better players. Whereas I would look at, you know, even players, maybe unfashionable players like Paul Lambert, if the comparisons between him and Callum McGregor, you're only picking Lambert. I mean, he's a guy who's who did it in Europe and McGregor's a really talented player, but he's never performed to any sort of level that, that Lambert did. Yeah, and Paul had won the Champions League before yeah, he came exactly. to us with Dortmund. Um, I get your point and it's, it's, it has changed a lot. The game has changed, as you said, because I'd see... The way we played, like the centre half's getting it the now and passing it to each other and back to the goalkeeper and he's putting it out that side and you take it away up the, the left hand side or back down, it's way up the right hand side. We we worked at certain areas, we got the ball there. Guys like Bobo and Johan and their centre halves don't want him on the ball. You don't want your centre halves on the ball. The object is to score goals, to get the ball up, up there as quick as you can score more goals on position and you know I don't want my centre half getting the ball and looking good and taking it there I'd rather be in there and smashed and win his headers win his 1v1 battles do his job pass it to the guys no disrespect that, that can do it mm-hmm. that, that create anything get the ball wide uh, you know the wing backs Alan Thompson's deliveries and get three guys going to attack it to go and score which is the object of the game No, not to you know, and it seems to be how it has evolved, and you're right. And I think everybody tries now to to play certain ways, uh, all about possession, possession, possession. But the games you don't win on possession; you win them by putting the ball in the net more than the opposition and doing their strengths. The centre half's job is to defend first and foremost. Uh, and if we're lucky enough, he's good in the box. As we've got a couple of now, we obviously with Duffy to go and attack them in there and, and score goals in opposition for set pieces. Yeah, I, I thought it was a daft comparison for, for Dermot Desmond to compare the Seville team. For me, just to change tack slightly, I, I thought a kind of fairer comparison would maybe be the, the team that got to the last 16 under Gordon Strachan. Um, mm-hmm. For me, player for player between this current team and that team, um, I, I think we'd have probably, if we did a combined 11 for me, you'd maybe have four or five, uh, or maybe even more from this current team. I've got it here, just the, the team that played in the San Siro ran the eventual winners of the Champions League to extra time, lost to a Kaka goal. Team that night was Boric, Telfer, McManus, O'Day, Naylor, Nakamura, Lennon, Snow, Megidi, Yarisic, and Venegura Hesselink. <laughs> Quite, it's crazy looking at that, John, isn't it? Because I mean, yeah. a lot of good players, Nakamura, Megidi, Lennon, great Celtic players in there. Mm. 
it just goes to show that you don't necessarily, you know, if you have better players, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to do better in Europe because you would definitely say that striking team was far superior to this current team in, in Europe anyway. Yeah, and it's interesting what Jackie's saying about underdogs in the Seville run too. Um, I feel like Celtic, this Celtic team are at their best when they're slight underdogs. We've seen that last year against Lazio. You know, both those games when when you know the, perhaps the pressure was on Lazio to win those games, Celtic really turned up and, and turned them over. And um, so that's what I like about this Celtic team. I think you're right. I mean, that that team that played Milan, you know, I wouldn't take many of those players in, into this team. I would certainly take Nakamura because he's, he's a genius. Um, and goalkeeper. Yeah, 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 and the goalkeeper. Um, but, you know, a few of those players are, are a bit dodgy, in, in my opinion, or don't exactly have a, an amazing Celtic legacy like some of the players in, in the current team do. So, a very interesting striking got a lot of those players. I would like to see Celtic be a lot more ruthless in Europe against teams that are of a lesser standard than us. So that, that's just what's been missing. I think, you know, the it's this counter-attacking thing. I know we've spoken about in videos before, but I just I've got the fear for us when teams can attack us. We don't seem to be well equipped to deal with it. So, um, that's that's the next step for me in Europe. I'll give you the final word, Jackie. If you've got anything you want to add. No, I think I agree with that. Uh, you know, on paper, the the, the players, the players here, and the Gordon's one that they don't jump out at you. You know, the goalkeeper was, was I liked him. I didn't play with, with after that. He, he came in just after I'd left. Mm-hmm. Uh, my replacement was playing. Telfer was playing. Um, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, no, it just shows you the bit. They've done really well getting to that. It was a great achievement for them. Uh, you know, obviously knew their jobs well and handled the, the pressure that comes along with that. It's fantastic uh, achievement. Great guys, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Um, if you want to see more of this kind of thing, you can subscribe to the 67 Hail Hail channel. Uh, click the alarm bell as well so that you don't miss out on any future videos. We will be back with far more over the coming days. Thanks very much guys and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you.